into it. So we've got the basic canvas set up, which if we check here, this is it. Oops, I'll refresh this. So we've got this here, and the red square that we normally have is our player is pretty stereotypical. So we get things like um, px positive, just kind of shorthand things a wee bit, so try and do things a little bit faster. Um, px pos, py pos, um, px speed, which would mean you can actually be a number, and um, my speed, which is a different number, um, and p, oops, p underscore width size equals that amount of 20. Right, so we're used to this setup, and we're going to have, this is a red, and obviously a player, and this is when it comes, px pos, Y pos P size P size um, and some we get in here yep there's that player back and we can get a function to move our player as per usual but we want to step in, um, away from the traditional stuff I'm going to go to using classes so what we do is we grab a new file that's going to be our one here, we will save it right next to this file here. So as we save, um, I'm under video classes, right? There's that file there, game game, and I'll just call this player.js because it's a JavaScript file. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make a class. Um, so when we make the class, what we're going to do is we're going to say class. Player. I always, whenever I use a, a class, I'm going to use a, a capital because just to separate it from the variable. So classes start with a capital. Then we have a constructor, and so the constructor basically is what we would pass in our arguments. So anything that our player would need. So if we had an image, we need a source. Um, so we can have an x pos, a y pos, a width, a height, needs a color, needs an x, x speed, uh, y speed. Okay, that's pretty much everything it needs. Um, so this dot x equals the x one there. Pretty sure that's how we do this. Um, I'll just double check down here, ah, uh, semicolon, uh, there we go, um, there we go, semicolon, um, right, so, right, so then obviously this is y, y, so the idea, exciting stuff, X speed Y oh, so X speed I was just thinking about the next line too much. Um Y and Y. Right. Okay, so we've set up our class. Um so in here we need to connect that now. So what I'll do is I'll just in here I will go script source equals it's already referenced player.js there you go so now it's imported here before anything kind of kicks off and we've got our basic setup but say if we want to draw a, uh, our block like we've done kind of the traditional way we'd just go um, make a function called draw we don't need to pass anything in because we've already got this stuff. So then I can go, um, sorry, let's look back here, right? So we've got here, canvas context build style. We're taking that stuff because it's the same thing. Instead of being C, we've got C here, but it's under this dot. Oh, that should be C, not S, I'm sure someone's getting frustrated looking at that. Good thing it's the computer wouldn't run it if it was an issue, so 
this dot c this dot x let's not copy that paste 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 right um so that's our draw function now so if i save this and here i'm going right how do i get this color rec now to do our player how do i get that working um so i'll leave that in there's a comment like that so what we need to do is go var player equals player see it's already recognized this here capital p with all these x question marks because it's got all these place holders from our class so yep so obviously our x now for the value we're going to put in is p x pos uh, p y pos uh, for our width p size comma p size width height color so in this case i just going to write um, green so it's you know it's different from the other one um, color sorry color then x speed y speed right so i've got p x speed comma p y speed right so that's that's me now um getting the player variable in it's all constructed and made so how do we render it well we use the player variable which is connected to the player class and then we want to draw so we use the draw function that we made so in here we use this function called draw so I've just gone player.draw so I should be seeing a place with nothing all right let's have a look what we've done here uh, sources duplicate name for our front line 2.j Ah, oh, how do I put that in there? Class constructor player cannot be invoked without new. Ah, okay, so. New. Or is it equals new? We will find out shortly. Right, let's just double check on my old one. Equals new. Yep, that's all good. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, equals new, that's all good. Let's refer to that. Uh, so, I save this and we have a look back here. W is not defined from player JS5. So, let's go look at player JS5. J is five. W is not defined. Oh, that's why. Height, width. Done absolutely brilliantly in this video, haven't I? Right, there we go. Oh God, it's working. Um, well, unfortunately, it did it uh, did highlight a few things that are typical. Obviously, yes, you're set up and having these named consistently um, and having them all line up. Yep, that's that's obviously a thing. Um, Okay, obviously it's variable equals new, then putting this in. Um, then you're calling this here, draw. If I wanted the player just to slide along the screen, I can quite easily now, in here, go move, player, oh sorry, not player, this dot x plus equals this dot x speed. Because that's what you have in, in the move. So if you go across here and then go player dot move, we go here and we refresh. There you go. Comes across. Simple as that. Um, so if we want to get this to being a key press and getting things happening, um, key presses aren't particularly anything new. So document dot add. Event listener key down comma we're gonna 
make a function called key pressed. Duplicate that and we'll call that key up. And key paste. Right. Um, bar refs key pressed equals false. Um, then we have up. Right. Down. And then we'll have the key codes as constants. Const left underscore key equals 37. Up. Right. Down. And this will be 38, 39, 40. Can see why I was doing in that order now. Um, so then we have a function. Function um, key pressed, as I said before. And we're passing in an event, which would be if the event dot key code is equal to left key press, then we'll say left. You press is now equal to true because we pressed it. And we'll take everything in there, copy, paste. This would now be uh, up key, up key. Oh, stop moving on me. Right. Right. Okay, come on now, can't work with me. Right. Down. Down. Okay. Left, left, up, up, right, right. Down, down. Okay, so they're all the same. Then I'll just need this duplicated because we've got key pressed and obviously we need key released. Key released, and then obviously all this is going to is false. Right, so we've got these ones here, and we've got these variables going. And the reason why I did the movement, um, even though it's not something particularly new, is like, well, how do I get variables from here affecting something in here if I'm wanting these variables to? Should be able to be used for movement. Well, just simply use them. So if if key pressed, see, it still recognizes them, and I can do this as well. And this dot x is greater than zero because it's a canvas edge. And I can say this dot x minus equals this dot x speed. So we're still obviously this donning. We're not using the px positive or what have you. Um, but I'll do it for right as well. I don't have to worry about up and down just yet, but that's all good. Um, oh, sorry. So, right. Key first one. Put me. Okay, didn't recognize it. it, didn't prompt me at all, which is strange. Uh, this dot x plus this dot width is less than canvas dot width. Then this dot x plus equals dot x speed. There we go. Um, so now if I go back here, uh, refresh it. Left and right key stops there. Stops there. So this logic here isn't different from the traditional movement, but instead of having play x pos, it's just this x pos because it's just re referring to whatever's in here. 
um, and then you've got obviously if you know your canvas and everything so it's still working fine um, if I wanted this to be slightly differently so let's say yeah we should get rid of this one um, if oops I'll just move this up So if this dot x is greater than canvas dot width, then we can say this dot x equals um, zero minus this dot. W divided by two. Whoops, divided by two. So half the width. So it should be half in the screen. So we should refresh this now. I got movement that way, movement this way still, and it should wrap. There you go. So is it just as it wraps out? Kind of phases in because it's like partly in. So you get that. Here. So it all still works as per usual, but it's just this kind of approach is slightly different. So classes. Are nicer and let you allow to do some other things further on. There's a bit more um, when it gets more technical. It's a nice way to have the the code broken up into having, you know, you got your game, and then your main chunks are broken up into your player and your enemies. So as you can see down here, I've got the main game. I've got a bullet class, an enemy class, and a player class. So um, there you go. That's the introduction to this. There is no reason why this drawer couldn't be to do with an image and then in here you'd source an image as per usual and then put the image in there's no reason why you can't use images with glasses nothing fundamentally different at all it works all the same so there you have it